Hey guys, it's Cass. I hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to hop on here and do like a little library haul reading update, just chit chatty video. I was inspired by Benjamin Journal's newest video. It was just super chill, like <laughs> laptop webcam, um, just chatting about books. And yeah, I just wanted to do that today. I've been meaning to make a video about my essay collection recommendations, but I keep putting off the planning for it. I need to like actually make my list of recommendations and I just haven't felt like doing that. So I figured we would do something just kind of off the cuff and chill today instead. <music> I went to my library last weekend, which I usually will stop in there and just like pick up the hold that came in for me and that's it. I don't tend to like wander around and actually like pick up books from the shelves, but I need to change that because it is actually such a nice experience. I did it probably around this time last year and I absolutely loved it but I just feel like I go through phases with the library where I'll like get a big stack of books from there like this I'll read them all and return them and then I just like won't do that again for some reason I'll start reading from my own shelf or digitally or whatever and I just kind of don't go there all the time but I definitely want to keep it up because it's like going it's like the same <laughs> psychological experience as going to the bookstore, but I don't have to pay any money for it. And I mean, I do have to give them back later, but I'm running out of shelf space as it is. So that's probably also for the best. <laughs> so I had initially gone to the library to pick up my hold of Small Fires and Epic in the Kitchen by Rebecca Mae Johnson. This is like a non-fiction, I guess like creative non-fiction book about cooking and recipes. I've seen some mixed reviews on it, but I finished it in like two days. I just finished it last night and I thought that it was interesting because I read this right after reading another book that I got from the library, which is The Chef by Marie Andier. This is a novel, um, fictional so these are both about cooking and I don't know it's just an interesting experience to read them at the same time I think that it made me enjoy both of them more so yeah I just posted my review of The Chef on Goodreads and Storygraph and Instagram and I need to finish writing my review of Small Fires uh and get that posted but of course, I'll talk about both of them in my wrap up as well. But yeah, it was an interesting experience. I feel like I'm always struggling to find the balance between like reading multiple books and kind of following a thread of a theme through multiple books while also not like burning myself out on the topic. And I think that this was like a nice little pairing. I would love to read more like food writing. Um, so if you have any recommendations for that, I would love to hear them. But yeah, I didn't even know that the chef existed until I came across it on the shelf at the library. And I was like, obviously I have to pick that up. And I think one of the reasons why I really enjoyed the chef specifically was because I was looking at all of the talk about cooking in here as like a metaphor for writing or like the creative process just in general. So that was kind of nice. I feel like a lot of the language that Marie Andia uses in it is just really reminiscent of the way that writers talk about writing. So it was kind of a fun little connection to make. I don't know if she did that on purpose or if that was like what the point of the book was, but that's how I was reading it. And then Small Fires was interesting. I, I definitely enjoyed the like first half of this book more than the second half, I would say. I feel like the last quarter of it specifically kind of lost me a little bit. She, I believe, did her like thesis on the Odyssey, which isn't really my bag, and there's a lot of like references to that in here. Um, one of the things that I found interesting though is she talks about 
um, the idea of like reception with the classics and basically that's just the way that uh, other people translate and reinterpret classical writing and she kind of compares that to what people do with recipes which I think some people found it far-fetched from what I could see in the reviews but I don't know I thought that it was like a fun mind exercise <laughs> and I enjoyed following her her thoughts on that she also talks in here about cooking this pasta sauce like a thousand times <laughs> It's just one of those recipes that she's like constantly returning to and it reminded me of my own relationship with a specific pasta sauce recipe that I'm pretty sure I have eaten once a week for the past year. Um, so yeah, this one wasn't my absolute favorite, but I think that uh, reading it after the NDA made this an even more enjoyable experience. Also in my journey uh, at the library, I picked up People Collide by Isle McElroy. I believe Renee from The Left-Handed Reader read this recently and really enjoyed it. And I saw it sitting on the shelf and remembered hearing her talk about it. And so I decided to grab it. I won't read the entire blurb for this, but uh, just like the top little bold part says, from the acclaimed author of The Atmospherians, a gender-bending, body-switching novel that explores marriage, identity, and sex, and raises profound questions about the nature of true partnership. So, sounds like it's gonna be something a bit different and experimental. I also grabbed Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick from the library. This is like very tiny. I don't know why I thought that this was going to be longer, but the blurb on here is really short too. Um, it says, in sleepless nights, a woman looks back on her life, the parade of people, the shifting background of place, and assembles a scrapbook of memories, reflections, portraits, letters, wishes, and dreams. An inspired fusion of fact and invention, this beautifully realized, hard-bitten, lyrical book is not only Elizabeth Hardwick's finest fiction, but one of the outstanding contributions to American literature of the last 50 years. So this, from that description, sounds like it's going to be right up my alley. I feel like Elizabeth Hardwick is someone that I've seen referenced in a lot of the books that I've enjoyed over the past couple years, so I'm curious to dip into this one. I know it is like an older book, I believe. Yeah, this says copyright 1979 by Elizabeth Hardwick. Yeah, I'm just curious to see kind of what the what the writing style is, what the vibe is in here, um, and how that affects my enjoyment of it. I also picked up Walking on the Ceiling by Isagul Savas. I grabbed this because I know that she's coming out with a new book this year called The Anthrop The Anthropologists, I think is the name of it. <laughs> I requested it on NetGalley and they were already at their limit for how many like digital copies of it they could give away. So I was like, let me grab this one instead. I don't really know anything about it. Oh, this actually sounds like it might kind of be similar, very, very loosely similar to if an Egyptian cannot speak English, um, just in the sense that it's uh, like a young woman moving um, and like meeting a man. <laughs> Looks like the man is writing a novel, um, growing unrest in Istanbul. Yeah, I don't know. I am just gonna kind of go into this one and see, see where it takes me. Also grabbed There Before The by Ali Smith. This is like, I, this book feels very large to me. <laughs> I have not read any other Ali Smith besides the seasonal quartet. I had, I have How to Be Both on my like TBR for the year, like the 10 books that I picked out at the beginning of the year that I want to get to at some point, but I don't know. I got like excited um, seeing these books on the shelves. I was like, oh my god, like I know her. <laughs> So I was like, let me let me pick it up. Once again, don't really know a ton about this. I did read, however, like the first page of it because I was considering picking it up 
um, like right after I got back from the library and the first two pages are talking about a Snoopy t-shirt that a child in this book is wearing. <laughs> so I love that. That sounds like it's gonna speak to me. Um, but I think that this is about a man at a dinner party who like locks himself in a room. His story is told from the point of view of like four different people that are at this party. So yeah, I'm curious to see how I find her non-seasonal quartet writing. I know one of my struggles with the seasonal quartet was that I kind of read them spaced out, so I'm hoping that her standalone novels will work better for me in that sense, that I don't have to like pick up a, a thread throughout multiple books over a period of time. I can just like enjoy this and then be done with it. <laughs> And the last library book that I picked up, I feel like this one is also humongous, like compared to the size of my head. Um, this is La Divine, La Divine, uh, also by Marie Andier. Once again, I just got excited seeing her books on the shelves. <laughs> and this one and The Chef are not available on Scribd or Everand now. I, I think that I will always accidentally refer to it as scribbed but yeah these two aren't on there and I've read uh the two other books of hers that I've enjoyed on there did that make any sense I don't know anyways I I grabbed this because I was excited about uh seeing Marie and DA in the wild I think that this one is very like motherhood uh themed oh there's murder a mesmerizing and heart-stopping psychological tale of a trauma that ensnares three generations of women. Sounds great. I'm curious to see if I'll actually get to this one this month. I just read uh, Self-Portrait in Green by Marie uh, at the beginning of March, and then I read The Chef just this past week. So I'm like, once again, kind of wanting to, to space her books out, but also I have it and it sounds interesting so we might we might have two of Marie's books in the April wrap-up we shall see what happens what else what else what else um besides the two food and cooking related books I've been reading The Long Form by Kate Briggs I've designated this as my like lunch break book for April I think I've talked about this in a couple of other videos but I've really been enjoying picking like a longer book and taking it with me to work every day and reading it for half an hour on my lunch break and just kind of getting through it little by little throughout the month this is a novel it goes over the course of a day and it talks about Helen who is a mother to Rose who's a little baby and yeah there's it seems like there's some interesting like literary things looking at like an early novel um like one of the first novels ever written and like some different like essays woven into here it's quite fragmentary the the chapters and sections are pretty short so I really like that kind of style for these like lunch break books <laughs> just because I don't have to worry about getting to the end of like a long chapter like stopping in the middle of a long chapter and trying to kind of find my way back into it the next day so yeah I am enjoying this one so far nothing super groundbreaking for me yet but I'm only I'm not even halfway through. I'm 140 pages in and I think it's like 440 pages or something like that. So I'm curious to see how this continues. Um, I'm also, I think like 20% of the way through Any Person is the Only Self by Elisa Gabbert. I am reading that digitally from NetGalley and I believe that that's coming out in July, but I just wanted to pick up an essay collection so enjoying that so far it's talking a lot about reading and not really writing so much mainly just reading so I, I always love that kind of thing but I've been reading that just like an essay or two before bed so I kind of have like lunch break book before bed book <laughs> and then I think that 
probably today I'm going to start The Passion According to GH by Clarice Lispector just as my like after I get home from work like afternoon and evening <laughs> book <laughs> I don't know I don't know if you guys also kind of have different books or different like styles of book that you like to read depending on like the day or the time but that's been actually working out really well for me recently so yeah I'm gonna probably get into this I feel like I haven't read any Lispector in a while and I love her so we're just gonna get back into it I talked about this in my spring TBR video it's basically woman kills cockroach and has an existential crisis <laughs> And I always see this recommended as like a good starting place for Lispector. I've already read a handful of her books, so this won't be my like entry point into it, but I'm excited to get to it because people usually speak very highly of it. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about two books that I actually purchased. I, uh, I feel like I bought a bunch of books in January and then February and March I've kind of chilled out a little bit. So I ordered used secondhand, even though it looks to be in like pristine condition, like spine is not cracked. Um, it looks really good. Um, this is Force of Circumstance by Simone de Beauvoir. This is the third, I don't want to throw it. Um, this is the third volume of her autobiography. I read the first volume last July, the second volume back in like November, December. I don't think that I'm going to pick this up anytime soon, but I've been searching for this specific cover of this book for a really long time. And um, yeah, I found this used bookseller on Abe or Abe Books. I don't know how it's pronounced, A-B-E Books. And... A lot of the times I feel like they'll use just like a stock image and then it ends up not actually being this edition of the book. So I messaged these people and I was like, hey, can you confirm <laughs> if this copy has a statue on the cover? And I've reached out to people before and they were like, oh, I'm like, no, we can't tell you that or it wasn't this. So um, yeah, they messaged me back. They're like, yep, it has a statue and I immediately hit the purchase button. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very excited to just have this uh, in my, my personal library. And then I also picked up All About Love by Bell Hooks. Me and Claire went to a new bookstore that just opened up in Pittsburgh called Stay Gold Books and we actually both purchased this book. I know she had mentioned wanting to buy it back in like the winter time and we had kind of been keeping an eye out for a used copy of it at Half Price Books but we didn't find one so we both ended up getting this. Will we do a buddy read? Who knows? I think we've only successfully read a little life as a buddy read back in january of 2023 and that was a very traumatizing experience so yeah we'll see if we actually end up reading this together or not but i'm really excited about this i hear nothing but praise for bell hooks and i think that this one is gonna be a really good one okay that is gonna be it for me today i hope you guys enjoy this like just kind of chit chatty, I don't really know what I'm doing, just talking off the top of my head kind of video. I definitely want to work on this essay collections recommendation video. I think I'll, I should have a bunch of time this weekend to do it. So I really want to just like, it's just the act of like putting the list together and like thinking about what I want to say <laughs> about each book that is the hard part. Um, but I really want to like buckle down and do that because I know that that was like requested by some people on Instagram and stuff when I asked what videos you guys want to see. So I want to check that one off the list. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, let me know what you've been reading, what you've been checking out from the library or purchasing. Oh, speaking of purchasing, I don't have the books here, which is why I didn't talk about them. 
but I just placed an order on Blackwell's, which I am so excited for. I think I'm going to be doing a vlog soon. Hopefully they'll arrive while I'm filming that and I can kind of talk about them there, but I'm so excited. If you guys don't know, Blackwell's is like a big bookseller in the UK. They have free shipping to the United States and I feel like the prices were really good, at least for the books that I picked up. So yeah, that was my first time ever placing an order with them and I'm excited. But yeah, let me know what you've been reading, what you've been buying, what you've been getting at the library, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,